Let's bring in our roommate, Dominic, now. He's a deputy manager at uh, Aviate, uh, Aviate Industries. Join me via Zoom. Um, great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me, Ladi. Yeah, so I'm sure you've seen this uh, story, <laughs> or this uh, news from KuCoin at this time. I'm surprised it's coming from uh, KuCoin um, first. But before we get to that, talk to me about this recent drop you know, we're seeing with Bitcoin, it did drop below that $60,000 level. What's driving Bitcoin down? Is it the German government or those massive whales that have been moving Bitcoins around? Ladi, truly, multiple factors have been causing this recent drop in Bitcoin. You know, the recent drop below $60,000 is likely due to a combination of factors like the Federal Reserve's decision to maintain interest um, rates that has dampened the hopes of a rate cut, which ideally, it that traditionally boosts speculative assets like cryptocurrencies. Additionally, we've also seen significant outflows from the Bitcoin ETFs, which indicates that institutional investors are currently taking profits or reducing their exposure to the digital asset markets. And, you know, um, there might also be some residual fear from most of the recent banking instability and the lingering concerns about regulatory crackdowns. This combination of factors must have caused the recent drop in Bitcoin. All right, let's look at KuCoin now. We know most of these uh, crypto exchanges, they did halt uh, P2P trades um, on their platforms, but I guess you know, other trades could still go on. And now we're seeing KuCoin um, telling their Nigerian users that they'll be charged VAT, about 7.5% VAT for most of their transactions going forward. So does it mean that um, there's some, that they're adhering to regulation, you know, in Nigeria at this time, and maybe we might get those P2P markets back and Nigerians can freely trade on these exchanges? Mm. About two weeks ago, when we were on this show, we were looking at some of the regulatory um, policies that have truly affected a lot of things in the world. And, you know, Nigeria, we have established again as taking a forefront in digital asset revolution and setting a pace and a platform and a framework for every other country, especially in the African continent, to follow. And KuCoin is actually just complying with the new tax regulations in Nigeria that requires them to collect VAT on transaction fee for users that are based in the country. You know, prior to now, there has been a circulation for a 10% VAT, VAT um, fee for most of the cryptocurrency firms that are operating here in Nigeria. And that should be implemented that with the national blockchain policy that came in 2023 as well. It is a good thing that we're seeing this come into fruition now as the VAT is coming back to our government that can see that they can use some of those fees to develop much more better infrastructures too that can help citizens. And now, I want to know how the users will feel you know, about this. Do you think Nigerian traders will be happy to be taxed by 7.5% VAT? Well, truly, the 7.5 percent. Let's get it clearly. It is not the, a 7.5 percent tax on their capital. It is a 7 percent tax, 7.5 percent tax on the trading fee. So, just imagine, let's say they are going to charge you a one dollar trading fee to possibly trade on KuCoin before. Prior to now, before this came, they used to charge trading fees across different trading platforms, and it still remains that that trading fee now that KuCoin is charging you or that KuCoin will charge you, like they let Nigerian government be able to make 7.5% tax on that trading fee and let that be paid back to the government. So it is the owners of the platform, KuCoin, that are also now escalating it to affect their users by saying, okay, we'll still take some more from your money. However, the government is majorly focused on the trading and transaction fee that KuCoin is making being remitted back to them. All right, we'll definitely keep tracking that story. But let's look at the um, ETFs now. We're seeing Grayscale and Bitwise uh, Bitcoin ETFs, major withdrawals um, in this uh, period. Is big money living crypto at this time? It's not necessarily a mass exodus. While ETF outflows are truly noticeable. One important thing for us to remember is that institutional investors have 
different strategies and time horizons. So maybe taking profit after the recent highs and others could just be reallocating their assets into other investment. This truly does not necessarily signal a complete loss of faith in the cryptocurrency market. We have seen similar fluctuations before and the market has historically rebounded from this type of fluctuations. All right, we'll definitely see. But talking about you know fluctuations at this time, where do you see opportunity in this market right now? The opportunity lagging in this market has always lied with people that are smart investors and long-term investors, people that have long-term potential return and diversification mindset. You know, um, I believe this deep presents a buying opportunity for those with long-term perspective. The Bitcoin fundamentals like its limited supply, its growing adoption has not changed. Moreover, blockchain technology continues to match up as the regulations are also becoming clearer, like we have just made mention of before. So we can expect more institutional involvement, which would definitely drive the prices up in the long run. Of course, any investment decision should be made carefully and based on the individual risk tolerance. But market sentiment truly, really which says buy when the market is fearful and sell when the market is excited, should truly see that smart investors are getting a scoop of this All recent right. drawdown and have a positive mindset. Definitely time to be a smart investor <laughs> at this time. Thank you so much, Rume Dominic, uh, Deputy Managing Director, Aviat Industries. Or you get um, having your perspective. Thank you. I'm grateful for having me.